Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video on KringleCon, the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge 2018. Uh, so in the last video we were just wrapping up objective number two, now let's check out objective number three. So to review, we were right in front of Tangle Colbox and the Lethal Forensic Elfication Terminal Challenge. Uh, Herbie Zimmerman is kind of in the way, so I'm sorry you can't see that right now. Uh, but let's check out what Tangle Colbox had to say, just to review. Um, looks like the Terminal Challenge is discussing uh, a Linux terminal editor and digital traces that it, leave that it left behind, sorry. Um, and when we viewed the hint that they actually kind of offered to us, it was something regarding uh, Vim artifacts. So we open this up, and it talks all about, in the page that it brings us to, the .vim info file. So it proceeds, the, the file name is preceded with a dot, right? So it's a hidden file that we would, is, it, it's stored in our home directory, and we can see it when we actually start up this terminal challenge. So let's go do that. I'll hit back, and hopefully it will bring me back to the game. Perfect, it does. No one is here. <laughs> That's weird, they all disappeared. Uh, so let's open up Lethal Forensic Elfication. And looks like Christmas is coming, and so it would seem Elf Resources Crushes Elf's Dreams. Find the first name of the elf of whom a love poem was written. Complete this challenge by submitting that name to Run to Answer. So last time I just ran ls in this directory and there was nothing there except Run to Answer. So it looks like, well, there's nothing for us to work with. Where else could we could we look? Uh, use ls a to view all the files. And you can see we have some uh, dot bash history, which might be interesting to actually check out. That's always kind of peculiar in case sometimes we can't see or we can see. Ah. <laughs> Turn off bash history. Sometimes it's kind of interesting to uh, uh, find uh, if, if you're on a game or, or terminals are shared to see other players' terminal history and check out their bash history. It's something you could do if you particularly wanted to. Anyway, we see this dot, dot .secrets file, or that folder there, so we can change directory into that. And in there, we have a folder called her. So let's check out that. And now we have poem.txt. Let's just cat it out so we can see it here. Poem.txt, great. So... Once upon a sleigh so weary, mortal scrub, the grime so dreary. Dre weary? Dreary? A slant rhyme? Maybe I just can't read. I don't know anything. <laughs> I didn't go to school. I went to a school, but I didn't go to a good school by any means. <laughs> um, I don't want to read all this to you, but it looks like we have Nevermore. Peering through the peephole, smiling, reaching forward and unlocking. Nevermore in tinsel stocking. Blah, blah, blah. By his lovely Nevermore. So Nevermore is seemingly something that may be trying to redact some information, right? So again, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and check out that .vim info file. So I'm going to nano that, I suppose, which I know is ironic. Oh, I don't even have nano. That sucks. Let's use cat. And I'll just pipe it to less. I don't have less. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Docker container. All right, I just catted it out. I'll scroll up, and let's see what we can work with here. There's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of nonsense, seemingly, when you don't look at it. But these comments here, denoted by the Vim info file, uh, are good. They're, they kind of will, will be self-explanatory in what it is that it's really discussing, or what was the last thing that was done. So you can see the last substitute search pattern uh, looked like Eleanor. Is kind of uh, some readable text in there. Um, last substitute string. Okay, it looks like nevermore. That's what we had seen in the in the file here. Command line history, newest to oldest. So save and quit. Save and quit. W is right, right, and Q is quit, as we saw in the uh, editor skills, essential editor skills, Trimbury Pi terminal challenge. So it looks like we read that secret poem earlier, and then we tried to substitute with some regex here. Eleanor with Nevermore. Okay, so we're clearly successfully running those commands as it's denoted here, and then we just wrote to the file and quit. So Eleanor is what Nevermore was, and that looks like that's our answer, right? That's the original name. So let's go ahead and run to answer with that information. Take some time to load, as usual. Who was the poem written about? Eleanor. Hit enter, and you can see the achievement down there. Awesome. Looks like Eleanor is trying to be spelled out here. Thank you for solving the mystery. Reading the .info, .vim info file sure did the trick. Cool. So now we can talk to uh, Tangled Colbox again to try and get some other hints. Thanks for helping me with the investigation. You Have you been able to solve the lock with the funny shapes? It reminds me of something called the De Bruggen sequence. Sequences. I don't know. I'm sorry. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. I just read things. You can optimize the guesses because there's no start and stop. Each new value is added to the end and the first is removed. I've seen these sequence generators online. Ah, here's the length of the alphabet. There are four, only four buttons, and the length of the pin is four as well. 
Okay, mathematically that means k equals 4 and n equals 4 to generate the sequence. Math is like your notepad and pencil, you can't leave home without it. Cute, very cute. I heard Alabaster lost his badge, it's pretty bad. Do you think someone more could do with that? Huh, okay. Odd. Um, this is the door passcode right here, and this is the speaker unpreparedness room, which is what is kind of hinted to us in the hints here. So, or, uh, I'm sorry, the objectives. If you look at number three, when you break into the speaker unpreparedness room, what does Morsel Nugget say? For hints on achieving this, okay, so we've covered him already. Uh, the hints that that person gave us, Tangle Colbox, yeah, Tangle Colbox, gives us a website here with the De Bruin sequence generator. Um, I open it up in a new tab. So this is one of those online generators that the elf was just discussing, right? K and N, and these are the two values for K is the number of, is the alphabet, right? Or the number of possible characters that could be in that sequence, and a string length of of four in this case, so that's N. So if I were to go back there, you, you could see this. If we clicked on the door passcode, uh, these are the four characters that we could enter, and it's a four character length passcode, right? So four and four, and those variables would update or change if you had a different criteria. Um, so going to this little generator here, we could see if we were to supply k equals four and n equals four, hit OK. It's generating the sequence or how it would look because these numbers wrap around, right? You can see that that would wrap, uh, and I'll show that here. If I were to go back to it, let's say I added a square, a square is added to the end, and the triangle that was on the beginning just popped off, right? So it, it, it moved around. Okay, so let's go back to this, right? You can see the table that shows us a more structured version of the sequence. So if we were to try these values, one of them would eventually be correct, because it's wrapping all around. You see, it's much a much more optimized search than a simple brute force search, uh, and we can go ahead and try this if we wanted to. What I'm going to do is actually just put this on my top screen so I can see it. And I will just crank through these. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. The answer was totally visible, but I'll cover this anyway. Let's say I wanted to go with 0, or 0, 0, 1, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, right? And then 0, 0, 0, 2. Sorry, I'm stupid. Oh, <laughs> one of them was correct, and we can go check that out. We can go view. Um, the, just what we had done before, I had entered 0, 0, 1, 1 in that case, and now 0, 0, 1, 2, and then 0, looks like that's the correct guess. So what that looks like, as we're viewing it, is 0, 1, 2, 0, and that was the sequence, and because it wrapped around, just me entering all of those in that sequence was able to find where that correct one was. So now that we've got that unlocked, we can walk through the speaker unpreparedness room, and Hash Brown's here. Hey, what's up? And a morsel nugget. So he says, welcome unprepared speaker. Excellent. So if we were to enter that in our badge, um, or just the objectives here, it says, welcome unprepared speaker. Hit enter. Looks like we've got the green check mark. That challenge is done. Excellent. Okay. So kind of funny thing, right? I didn't do that through the game. Didn't do it through Kringle KringleCon originally. I had tried to do it through just the static web page on holidayhackchallenge.com. So they give us a link to a door passcode, which is its own little website here, doorpasscode.kringlecastle.com. And I actually looked at this, and I didn't want to deal with the debrugian sequence or something. I thought, like, oh, this is just something that I can brute force. So I, I literally brute forced all the potential things and never even saw it get the right one. Um, but I looked at the source code of this webpage, and if you actually check it out, yeah, there's a lot of JavaScript here, it looks like it does stuff, but if you keep scrolling down, I noticed, hmm, there's an image ID equals banner, source equals database victory banner dot PNG, maybe that DB doesn't stand for database, but honestly, I looked at this and I was like, hmm, victory banner, it says, <laughs> this image says, welcome unprepared speaker, so I typed that in and solved that challenge. Um, Obviously, that took little to no work. Just view the source and open that image up. But uh, that's what I had done when I really went through all this. Although, certainly, I think learning about this thing, the De Bruggen sequence, and sorry, it's back on my top screen. But you don't, we don't need this open anymore. We can kill it. 
that's that. That's challenge number three, objective number three. So very cool. We're just cruising right through this. Um, before the end of the video, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next challenge, see what we've got here. Actually, let's look at the narrative, because we actually haven't taken a look at that in some time. As you walk through the gates, a familiar red-suited holiday figure warmly welcomes all of the special visitors to KringleCon. Great. Suddenly, all the elves in the castle start looking very nervous. You can overhear some of them talking with worry in their voices. The toy soldiers, who were always gruff, now seem especially determined as they lock all the exterior entrances to the building and barricade all the doors. No one can get out, and the toy soldiers grunts and take on <laughs> take on an increasingly sinister tone. Mmm. So, those toy soldiers were not that nice. And we knew that, right, when we talked to them. <laughs> They're just kind of jerks. So, maybe they are sinister and evil. Hans is watching. Hans? How do, how do I say that guy's name? I don't know. I'm not going to. All right, what do we have next? Let's take a look at our badge and see what it is that is a uh, objective number four is all about. Data repo analysis. Retrieve the encrypted zip file from the North Pole Git repository. What is the password to open this file? For hints on achieving this objective, please visit One Horse Open Sleigh and help him with the stall mucking report cranberry pie. All right, we saw One Horse Open Sleigh downstairs. Cool. Here we are at One Horse Open Sleigh. Let's check out what he has to say. Hello. What was that password? Golly, passwords may be the end of all of us. Good guys can't remember them, and bad can't guess them. I've got to upload my chore report to my manager's inbox, but I can't remember my password. Still, with all the automated tasks we use, I bet there's a way to find it in memory. Huh. Okay. Let's check out what that hint was. I guess I don't know entirely what this challenge is about, but if we were to look at the hint here from One Horse Open Slate, plain text credentials and commands. Keeping command line passwords out of PS. Passwords on the command line visible to PS, not in Linux. Hmm. 13 ways to make your Oracle database more secure. Run a SQL. So this is the case where sometimes when people will log into a service or connect to something like SQL or Samba or anything, they will enter the uh, password in the command that, that runs it. Um, and you can actually visit that, uh, like view that sometimes. In Windows, task list V will display the username and password. And on Unix, the PS command will do the same. On the other hand, if you run the SQL script like this, SQL plus no logs. You have the connect system Oracle in this Oracle script yourself, and the Oracle password will not be visible. That's a good point. Linux does not actually have this problem at all. I found that Linux doesn't display the SQL plus username in Oracle 9 and 10. Blah, blah, blah. Huh. Are there comments on this? Nope. Looks like not. But it looks like that's the idea, is being able to see the command line that actually started a program and make that visible to uh, while we're looking at it in Linux. So let's take a look at what that is. It's the stall mucking report. Oh, I hit F11 while I was inside the Docker container and it yelled at me. So thank you, madam or sir, for the help that you bring. I was wondering how I might res rescue my day, finish mucking out stalls and all those pulling the sleigh. My report is now due or my Kringle's in a sling. I think Kringle is something to censor something, because that's what all that's what all the, the when you chat and you type a bad word, it replaces it with Kringle. So I'm, I I think that's funny that they use that here. <laughs> There's a Samba share here on the terminal screen. What I normally do is to upload the file with our network credentials we've shared for a while. When I try to remember, my memory is clean. Be it last night's nog bender or just lack of rest. Blah blah blah. Complete this challenge by uploading the else report.txt file to Samba share at this location, and we have report.txt here. Can you check it out? Okay, nothing peculiar or interesting there, but... Alright, that's cool. Enough of a cliffhanger for the end of this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll tackle this in the next video. But uh, I hope you're enjoying the series. I hope you're having fun with it. I certainly am. I love the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge, and I say that again and again. I'll say it until I die. Or, you know, my YouTube channel dies. <laughs> On that note, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you. Bye.